Dr. Golden, good to see you again. Thanks nice for joining us you. here on Health Connection. Okay. New topic, pulmonary hypertension. We like to start with definitions. What is it? Well, pulmonary hypertension is elevated pressure in the large and small arteries of the lungs, which are called the pulmonary arteries. Right. Basically, blood returns from the body needing to get more oxygen in the lungs. It's literally pumped into the lungs. And if the pressure goes up in those arteries, it makes it more difficult for the blood to reach the areas of the lung where it has to get more oxygen. Pulmonary hypertension versus the hypertension we all know about, are they different? Is it different than high blood pressure? Well, it is different than high blood pressure, although the, in both cases we're talking about an elevated pressure. Uh, high blood pressure uh, in which the body, the blood is actually being pumped out into the body carrying oxygen. And in that case, if the pressure is elevated, it puts increased force on the brain, on the heart, on the legs, on the kidneys, and this is what leads to stroke and heart attack. It's because the pressure in the blood vessels is too high. In the lungs, it's the same thing, namely the pressure is too high, but in one case, we don't get enough oxygen into the blood. That's the primary difference with pulmonary hypertension. What causes it? It can either be due to another abnormality in the body or it can be a primary part of the lungs. For example, if, the, uh, if you have heart failure so that your heart is not circulating enough blood, then that blood backs up from the heart into the lungs and raises the pressure in the lungs. That in effect is pulmonary hypertension, okay. but it's secondary to heart failure. All right. It may also be secondary to abnormal valves in the heart. Again, secondary. Right. On the other hand, if we have a primary problem in the lung in which the vessels simply have increased resistance, many times for no known reason, but certain types of lung disease, the pressure will go up. That's called primary pulmonary hypertension. Are there any symptoms, and if so, what are they for pulmonary hypertension? Shortness of breath what we call dyspnea, dyspnea on exertion, is the primary symptom. The individual simply with exercise, maybe a lot of exercise or simply walking across the room, will develop shortness of breath. Other symptoms are chest pain. It's not exactly the same kind of chest pain you get with angina, but nevertheless it's chest pain. Blackout spells that we call syncope are common. Coughing up blood, may be common, but shortness of breath beyond all else is, is the major symptom. Why is diagnosing pulmonary hypertension so challenging? It's because we don't have a real easy way to measure the pulmonary artery pressure. When you have your blood pressure taken, you're actually measuring the pressure in the artery of the body, and you're doing that by putting a cuff around that artery. Well, there's no way to put a cuff around the artery in the lung, so you cannot directly measure the pressure. What we have to do is with an ultrasound of the heart called an echocardiogram, we can estimate the pressure in the lungs and we can know if it's normal or elevated. That's not quite as sophisticated as measuring it. Another thing that you have to do to measure it is to actually do a cardiac catheterization where you insert a catheter into the right heart and the pulmonary artery to measure the pressure. That's a lot more complicated than simply walking into the office and having your blood pressure taken. Assuming we have, in fact, though, gotten a diagnosis of pulmonary hypertension, how do we treat it? Well, uh, we treat it with uh, reduction of uh, heart risk factors. For example, in individuals who have pulmonary hypertension, who have lung disease, as we've said many times, smoking cessation is at the top of the list. So, I mean, it's absolutely imperative that the individual discontinue smoking, that they do anything they can to get more oxygen into the blood because this, in fact, lowers the pressure. So, weight loss, exercise up to their limits, and smoking cessation are very important. Then there are many medicines that can be used to treat pulmonary hypertension. Some of them are once-a-day medicines that are quite effective, 
but it goes all the way to medicines that are infused into the vein on a continuous 24-hour basis. Obviously, that's a much higher uh, amount of treatment than just taking a pill. And it can get as far, depending upon the, how severe it is, things such as lung transplant or opening a new channel inside the heart to get the pressure off the lungs. So from simple medications all the way to lung transplant. UT Health Northeast is the only health center in our region that uses nitric oxide to diagnose pulmonary hypertension. Tell us why that is significant. Well, the nitric oxide is being used to see how responsive the pulmonary vascular bed is to treatment. So we talked about how difficult it is to make the diagnosis where we have to measure the pressure in the lungs. What you'd like to know if you're going to all that trouble to measure the pressure in the lungs, which medicine might be the best medicine to use. So what you do, once you have measured and decided that the pressure is elevated, you use a substance such as nitric oxide to see if the pressure will drop when you give the nitric oxide. This then will tell you which form of treatment might be the best for that patient. There have been several ways that have been used in the past to lower the pressure. The current state of the art is the use of nitric oxide to see how reactive the pulmonary vasculature is. Is there anything we can do to avoid getting pulmonary hypertension in the first place? Well, in terms of pulmonary hypertension, secondary to heart failure, which in this uh, country, the most common causes of heart failure are high blood pressure and uh, coronary artery disease or heart attack, then you need to manage all of those risk factors for heart failure and heart attack. So cholesterol, getting your blood pressure treated if it's elevated, regular exercise, weight loss, smoking cessation, if your pulmonary hypertension is due to underlying lung disease, once again, you need to discontinue smoking. If you're supposed to be being treated for sleep apnea, then you want to be treated for it and take the treatment. Uh, that will also help the pulmonary hypertension. If you have the rare disorder of primary pulmonary hypertension, you cannot prevent that. Very well. Doctor, good to see you again, and thank you. Nice, nice to see you.